Chris Basham of Sheffield United suffered an absolutely horrific looking leg injury today, which required him to be transported immediately to the hospital. Now on the play that Basham was injured on, we saw that essentially his foot and ankle got tripped up and as he rolled over, it looked like his ankle was actually dislocated. It's common for ankle dislocations to essentially be accompanied with ankle fractures as well. And since some people may not be too familiar with the anatomy of that, I wanna go ahead and focus on that with this video. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel. If you're not familiar with me, my name is Nick Gallo and I'm a doctor of physical therapy. And with my channel, I take a look at sports injuries and I explain them so that they're a little bit easier to understand. I also go over the specific anatomy as well as what that person should expect when in rehab for that injury. If you like this content and you wanna see more of it, please hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because I will be making more of these videos in the future regarding sports injuries, rehabilitation, and other physical therapy related content. Also, if you have any comments or questions, please leave those in the comment section below. So we see here that as Basham is running down the field, that left foot and ankle seem to unfortunately get tangled up in the turf there. And as he rolls over, this is where that foot and ankle seem to be dislocated. So here I have a model of the foot and ankle. And so in order to make up the ankle joint, this first long bone, which is often associated with as being the shin bone, is also called the tibia, is going to come down and form the medial malleolus or the inside portion of the ankle right here. Then as we move towards the outside portion of the ankle, we have another long bone known as the fibula, which is going to come down and form the lateral malleolus or the outside portion of the ankle. Then as we look deeper into the ankle here, there's a bone known as the talus bone and the articulations between those bones essentially are what we know as being the ankle joint. Now we have several ligaments that are located within the ankle joint in order to contribute to overall ankle stability. As we look on the outside portion of the ankle, there are three of them. The first one is going to be that ATFL or anterior talofibular ligament going right in through here. Then we have the CFL known as the calcaneofibular ligament going through here. Finally, we have the PTFL, which is going to locate on essentially the back portion of the ankle, which is the posterior talofibular ligament. In any motion that mimics that classic ankle sprain position where the foot is going to go in like this, this is where you're going to get excessive stretching of those ligaments and put them at risk for a potential injury. As we look more on the inside or the medial portion of the ankle, we have a group of ligaments that are essentially referred to as being the deltoid ligament. And anytime the foot is going to go in an eversion position where the foot's coming out here, that is going to excessively stretch that deltoid ligament and also put that at risk for injury. So as we take a look at the video again, as he's running, it looks like that foot is going to go in that classic ankle sprain position where the foot is going to get caught underneath of him. And that is going to put excessive stretching essentially on those lateral ligaments on the outside portion of the ankle. As he's doing this as well, you are also getting excessive stretching of all of the attachments that are going to attach to that lateral malleolus. And this can put that at risk for having a fracture, as well as if you look on the model here, you're doing excessive compression of the medial malleolus, which can also put that at risk for a fracture as well. Then as we look deeper in the model here, essentially as you're compressing a certain side of the talus and stretching a certain side of the talus, that can also lead to a tailor fracture as well. We don't know specifically what is fractured in this case, but we do know that the ankle actually looks dislocated here. And a lot of times these ankle dislocations do not come without a fracture. So most of the time there is an ankle fracture as well as a dislocation. Now, what leads to a dislocation? Essentially any sort of disruption of the ligaments and or the other structures around that contribute to stability. And if those are compromised, then the ankle can essentially come out of the joint just like this. And that appears what we're looking at in this case. It looks like as he rolls over, the ankle unfortunately is out of the joint and it looks like it's just in that very gruesome position. In extremely rare cases, the ankle can be dislocated without fracture. Essentially, if that foot is planted in something and there is a violent twisting motion like this, it can come out of the joint there. But like I said, that's on a much more rare case and some sources have already said that he's dealing with a leg break. So right now it looks like he's dealing with a fracture and a dislocation of the ankle joint. And it's also important to say that there are cases where when a person is dealing with a fracture dislocation, 
then the bone can actually stick through the skin. This is known as an open fracture and or compound fracture. I didn't happen to see it in this video or in any of these images, but it does look pretty gruesome and it does look deformed, which is absolutely symptomatic for an ankle fracture dislocation. This is absolutely a medical emergency as well, because in cases like this, you have very important blood flow as well as nervous structures that are going through the joint. So you wanna make sure that there's no damage to those as well. So this is absolutely an emergency situation, which it's very appropriate as to why he was immediately taken to the hospital in the ambulance. If we're dealing with a case where the bones are so displaced that they need surgical intervention, then they're going to do something known as an ORIF or an open reduction internal fixation. Essentially here, what they're going to do is they're going to put some plates and screws to stabilize the bones so that it can heal properly. Now when we get somebody in physical therapy for this sort of an injury, whether or not they had surgery, essentially we're going to need at least four to six weeks for that bone to heal regardless. If they have surgery, then the person is going to be something known as toe touch weight bearing, where you're not putting all the weight through the foot because you wanna make sure that the bone's healing. Then if the person has follow-up x-rays and we know that the bone's healing properly and it's still in alignment, then we can start putting weight through it. We can start working on range of motion and then we can slowly start to reintroduce strengthening. Usually at about the 12 week mark, this is when we can start to work in more sports specific training. So we're going to need to wait and see essentially how bad this is because if any sort of nerve and or artery was compromised in this case, it's going to complicate it as well as essentially if he has any sort of infection from a potential open fracture. If I happen to hear any updates on this case, I'll be sure to update everybody in the comment section. Also, if you happen to hear anything, please feel free to update me as well. So we wish Chris Basham the best of luck moving forward. This was unfortunately a very horrific injury to watch, but it looks like he's getting the proper care and we should hear any minute regarding his case. If you like this sort of content, I'm gonna go ahead and link a playlist of mine where I talk about some other ankle injuries so that you can take a look at those. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel and I'll see you next time.